Hey you guys, Bite Size here. A little bit of a different video this time. I want to go over one of my kills that I did in Nerebar Palace Heroic. I will say straight away, first of all, my gear isn't that fantastic. Second of all, it's in a pug because I don't have a raiding guild because of my real life job. I can't actually stick to a raiding guild schedule. And third of all, I do make quite a few mistakes during this fight. However, despite all of those things, I managed to get a 95% overall log, which I was pretty happy with. So I just kind of want to go over what I did, as well as point out some obvious mistakes and how to correct them. This is the gear that I had for the fight. Like I said, not very good. Uh, 593 overall, decent trinkets, but yeah, definitely not the best gear you'll see. Hoping to improve that quite a lot next week when Mythic Plus comes out. I will just show quickly as well. These are the talents that I used on the fight. Just the standard single target Archon recommended talents. Nothing too special here, but let's get into the fight. So on pull, straight into Vampiric Touch, usual opener, Power Infusion, Shadow Fiend. Use all of my Mind Blast charges. I should here use my Halo before Void Eruption. I'm pretty sure I end up doing Void Eruption first. It's kind of just habit. I feel like I it's something I want to use in Void Eruption for the damage increase. But your first Halo, you should use outside of Void Eruption. And I believe the reason is it essentially stops your, your Halo from desyncing in future. Um, because Halo has a cast time, if you're using that cast time during your Void Eruption, and obviously you've got all your things like your Mind Blast recharges and things like that, you end up desyncing your cooldowns. So using it first is the preferred option. However, I kind of forgot that. I, like I said, I am still making some mistakes. But yeah, once my Mind Blast charges are used up, straight into Void Eruption... I use my Mind Blast Charges again, Void Ball and my Death Speaker procs, get a fresh Devouring Plague out so that I can Void Torrent. The reason why I do that is because I want to make sure the full Void Torrent duration is being buffed by the maximum amount of my Mastery. So getting a, a fresh Devouring Plague up at that, that point allows me to make sure that happens. And then really here, it's just following the standard rotation. I'm not over capping on my Mind Flay and Sanity procs. I'm not over capping or trying not to on Mind Blast Charges. Trying to keep Devouring Plague up as much as possible. Trying to use my Void Bolt on cooldown or as close to as possible. Just the usual Shadow Priest general rules. And obviously maintaining Shadow of Pain and my Vampiric Touch. So I was pretty lucky to not get any mechanics that required movement until this point. Obviously I just tried to sort of st or step my way in to minimise the amount of downtime that I'm going to have. And then during this mechanic you're being pulled back. So I could have done more here if I'm being honest, to save up more things to use instant cast. So I could have maybe, if there was a death speaker proc, I could have saved it. I am luckily in void form, so I do have access to void bolt, but I could have saved up some more insanity to use more devouring plagues. On heroic, the pullback isn't that big a deal though, really. So it's not that bad if you do mess this up a little bit. Um, but obviously yeah, I've still got access to my void bolt. I'm far away enough that I can get a mind blast cast in there. As long as you're not having too much time there where you're not casting, then you'll be okay. Just generally, it's a good idea if you know that you're going to have to move, save up some things so that you've got things to use during that movement. So Halo comes back off cooldown, goes straight into using that so that it's, well, it will be desynced with my other cooldowns, unfortunately, as I mentioned, but not by too much. Again, here, I've got to move to get to this guy. I think, if I'm honest, I'm pretty sure I miss it anyway. Yeah, I do. So, that's my bad there. I was quite far away, and I noticed enough people were in the ring anyway, so that I didn't need to soak it. So I could have either made two decisions. Number one, just go earlier, um, give up a little bit of DPS just to get there. Or number two, which would have been the preferred option in this case, realise that there was already enough people doing the mechanic, and just sit in DPS. Unfortunately, I did neither and kind of sat in on the fence and tried to do both, which did cost me a little bit of DPS. Nothing major, but it's certainly something that you can point out as a mistake on this fight. So again, just normal rotation, making sure that you're trying not to overcap on things, using things as they come up on cooldown, because you don't really want to save your cooldowns too much of Shadow Priest. But then we go into phase two here. Once we get into phase two, I will say... I'm quite surprised I still got a good log on this fight because I didn't run Shadow Crash. I kind of felt like with the group that we had and in the previous sort of trash pulls and things with this group, we were doing quite a lot of AoE. 
So I made the judgment call. I will try to do as much dam boss damage as possible. As the adds will die really quickly, I'm not going to take Shadow Crash. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen and the adds actually lived for a while. So I wish I had taken Shadow Crash on this occasion, but it's one of those things. Probably as a general rule on this fight, unless you've got absolutely crazy, crazy DPS in your group, you probably should take Shadow Crash. So yeah, this phase does end up being a fair bit more difficult for me without it. So boss goes under. Once the ad starts spawning, like I said, I've not got Shadow Crash, so I kind of end up in a situation where I'm trying to dot as many of them as possible, but then I end up realizing there's probably too many of them and they're dying, a few of them are dying too fast, I can't keep just dotting them. My cooldowns come up about the same time, so my thought process here was essentially just use my cooldowns. Let Halo do as much work as possible because there's so many mobs if I'm going to go around without Shadow Crash and try and dot all of these, I'm just going to waste so much time and not do any damage. So my thought was, just get into my cooldowns. Don't just use Halo because I'll desync it. So get Power Infusion, Void Eruption and Halo all, all used. Try and get as much damage from Halo as I can because I'll be able to do a lot of work here with so many targets. And by not delaying it for the whole phase, I'll probably end up getting another full round of cooldown uses later on in the fight. So that's my thought process, so I go into all my cooldowns here. Unfortunately, like I said, I wish I had Shadow Crash right now. <laughs> They're all stacked perfectly as well and not dying very quickly. But basically, I just try to let Halo do as much work as possible and just do as much damage as I can using my procs and my mind flays and things like that. So then we get into this phase here where it's just essentially feed the boss. Uh, so I'll skip ahead for that. Back into phase one, so... Same things apply here, really. I'm going to look to maximize my Devouring Plague uptime. I'm going to look to not overcap on procs. I'm going to look to get as many uses of my cooldowns as possible. Um, and I'm going to look to try and get either move as little as possible or be prepared for movement by having spells ready that I can use instant cast while I'm moving. So back into just standard flow rotation. Halo comes off cooldown, so I want to use it as quickly as possible, which I do. Webs come in. I think the green circle, yeah, the green circles come in now. And again, it's not something that needs to affect me. I don't need to move for them. I'm not close enough to any webs that people want to clear, so I just stand and just tore at the boss. If you don't need to move, don't. Simple as that as a DPS, well, as a caster anyway. If you don't need to move, just don't. Here, again, I actually do get into the mechanic on time this time. Um, again, though, I've not saved up enough things. I should have, again, gone into this with more insanity, Death Speaker procs, or sh like Shadowy Insight procs, whatever. Just something, anything so that I can just buy a couple of seconds of not having downtime. Instead, I end up in a situation where I'm not casting that many spells during this pull-in. So I do lose again a bit of DPS there, something I need to improve. End up in a bit of a sticky situation here where, as well where I've not managed my insanity particularly well. So you'll notice that last couple of seconds I'm in that weird situation we've all been in where you don't have anything cool to press. You've not got enough insanity to Devouring Plague. You've not got Mind Blasts. You've not got your Void Torrent. You're just kind of Mind Flaying. It's not even Mind Flay Insanity. Um, yeah, those moments are really harmful for your DPS. They are sometimes impossible to avoid, though. But I probably could have done a better job there, I think, managing my insanity with my uh, Devouring Plague usage. Another mistake that I make here, I Void Torrent too late. So I do this Void Torrent. As you can see, Devouring Plague just fell off. And I've still got three quarters of a Void Torrent left. I should have either used Void Torrent as soon as I gone into the Devouring Plague, or if that wasn't possible because of Void Torrent's cooldown, I should have waited until I had a new Devouring Plague ready to maximise my mastery uptime. But again, cooldown's coming up here. Three circles did spawn on me this time. I probably could have just stayed still and allowed them to move around me. Um, but being in a pug, I wasn't sure where they were going to go, and I thought they might move to 
these two webs that are right in front of me. Turns out they all moved away from me, so I could have just stayed still. Um, but it's quite hard to know exactly where people are going to move and things like that in a pug. It's quite unpredictable. But again, my cooldowns came up, so I've used them. Power Infusion, Void Eruption, Halo. No point delaying them. There is going to be another Phase 2, but again, when you're this close to the end of a fight, so the boss is on 27% HP, I know we're going to get another phase. So that phase is probably going to last between maybe a minute, a minute 30 probably, was my guess. So if I use my cooldowns now, there's a very good chance that even my two minute cooldowns, I'm going to get another full usage of during the fight. So yeah, objectively speaking, these cooldowns may have been better served waiting for the adds and probably done more damage individually. But if that stopped me getting another full use of cooldowns, I would end up doing less overall DPS. That's one of the tips that I included during my Shadow Tips video that I put up recently. It's one of the most important tips of trying to get good DPS as a Shadow Priest. So again here, I do a much better job on this one. We've got the pull in and I've got... I'm in Void Eruption, so I've got Void Bolt. I've got lots of Insanity for Devouring Plagues. I've got a Death Speaker proc. I've got Mind Flay Insanities, which are really quick channels. So this whole time, I'm using abilities and not really losing any DPS whatsoever. Back into the standard rotation. But then Phase 2 again is coming up. So I've still got a minute 30 on my two big cooldowns, my Void Eruption and my Power Infusion, and 31 seconds on Halo. So just notice how I'm going to get another use of my cooldowns before the end of the fight. So again here, same thing. Kind of a painful phase for me, playing Shadow without Shadow Crash here, but try to do the best that I can, just dot as many targets as possible. Once I start to feel like it's kind of a waste of DPS, just nuke as many of them as I, as I can. I get my halo up again here though, so again I use my halo because so many mobs is going to do quite a lot of work. But I'm essentially just kind of hoping for phase one at this point. All the adds die, got a pretty decent amount of halo value. Um, so then again it's just back into the feeding phase. So we'll just skip ahead for that one. I actually end up running back and feeding the boss twice here. Back into phase one. But now, boss is on 17% HP. Power infusion, 12 seconds remaining. Void eruption and halo also coming back, um, also coming back shortly. So, because of that decision a few minutes ago to use my cooldowns and not delay them for phase two, getting a whole new use of all three of those cooldowns. Massively important, and it's probably the reason why I ended up with a decent log on this fight, just from one decision. So always try to weigh up, guys. Even if it seems like the best decision to delay your cooldowns for like some big AoE or a big moment, is it going to cost you a use of a cooldown? Could you get more cooldowns per fight? Just always bear that in mind. But yeah, so now, a bit of time with all three of my cooldowns up, whilst I've got Twist of Fate. So doing lots of DPS here. I think my Void Torrent is going to come back before the boss dies, but I don't press it. The reason why is because the boss is so close to death, and Mind Flay Insanity, when you're playing Archon, just does so much DPS. With that 60% buff that Archon gives to Mind Flay Insanity, which does a lot of damage anyway, even when you're not Archon, the amount of damage per second it does is incredible. So instead of pressing Void Torrent, I just decide to dump all of my Mind Flay Insanity procs instead. So as you can see here, just chaining Mind Flay Insanities back to back just to get them all used up. Shouldn't have moved for that. <laughs> that was silly. The boss was so close to death, I have no idea why I tried to move for that mechanic. Should have just stood there and pressed Shadow of Death or something. Um... But yeah, so definitely some things that I could work on, some things that I could improve on. But as you can see, with Shadow, the key to DPS, the two main things that I would point out for a fight like this anyway. Number one, 
being efficient with your movement. I made some mistakes with it that I could definitely improve, but just always try to remember, if you don't need to move, don't. And if you do need to move, be prepared. Have things ready so that you can keep casting while you're moving. And then as well as that, your cooldown usage. Weigh up the decision. Save them for a huge moment, like a big ad spawn or something, or maybe use them straight away if you're going to get more cooldowns per fight. It's something that's going to change depending on the DPS of your group and your kill times, but try to factor this in whenever you can. It can make the difference between a decent pass and a really good one. I've got a shadow tips and tricks video that highlights some of the things that I went over in this video a little bit more in depth. So if you want to see that, it should be on the screen now. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.